Welcome to my fifth LaTeX tutorial on bibliographies and bibliography management. During this tutorial, we'll learn how to use LaTeX embedded bibliography management system as well as BibTeX, which is a database oriented system for managing bibliographies. When conducting scientific and mathematical research, any progress you make is progress that typically builds upon the work of others who came before you. It's essential that you cite this research. Doing so establishes your credibility as a researcher because it can help demonstrate that you've taken the time to learn and understand the landscape of the field that you're researching. It also helps establish your integrity as you are transparently delineating between your own work and the work of others and taking credit only for your own contributions. As I've said, we'll explore two approaches to maintaining a bibliography and citing references in your LaTeX documents. LaTeX includes an embedded system for typesetting bibliographic references at the end of your documents and citing them within the body of your documents. In many ways, this system is simpler to get started with and use for smaller projects. However, it does tend to scale poorly to larger projects. Most LaTeX distributions also come bu bundled with BibTeX. BibTeX uses a simple database architecture for storing bibliographic information for all of your references in one or more external database files. Whenever you cite a reference, BibTeX draws that information from the database and creates a bibliographic entry using your chosen style and links the citation in your text to it. So we'll begin by working with the embedded system. If you're writing a single paper on a topic and you do not anticipate that it's going to grow into a larger ongoing project, then you might consider using the embedded system for managing your bibliographic references. The embedded system works very much like list structures. To use it, all you really need to do is place the following environment at the end of your document, right before the end document statement. It's, it's the bibliography environment and you open it with a begin the bibliography statement Although this one takes an additional required numerical argument, we're going to set as a nine for now, and we'll, we'll, we'll see what that means in a moment. Then you'll end that environment with the uh, end of the bibliography statement. Now, what the nine is all about is if you anticipate that there are going to be more than nine references in your bibliography, replace the nine with any two digit number. Do you think you're gonna have a hundred or more? Well, replace the nine with any three digit number. Typically, what I do for that value is I'll, I'll put in a 9, a 99, 999, so on, whether I'm thinking I'm going to have a single digit number of references, a number of references in the double digits, or a number of references in the triple digits, and so on. Within the bibliography environment, new bibliographic references are initiated with the bib item command. The required input argument for this command is just a, a text label or citation key. In fact, the citation key behaves very much like a label for your bibliographic reference. It's just, it, it's a reserved label for bibliographic references. So it works with cite and bib item rather than ref and label. To cite a bibliographic reference, we're going to use the cite command in the body of your document wherever you wish to place your citation. The command requires you to pass it the citation key of the bibliographic reference that you're citing. So it just needs to match the key that you used when you defined a bib item. So there are advantages to the embedded system. It's relatively simple to use. You can use a list. You can essentially use the embedded system. It's also pretty quick to get up and running. It doesn't require you to put any work into preparing and maintaining an external database of the bibliographic reference data before you can use it. You just have to format your bibliographic entries within the bibliograph well within the the bibliography environment, and then cite them. Of course, that's the disadvantage. Also, you're responsible for formatting each entry in your bibliography. So, if you're writing multiple articles about the same topic, you might submit them to different publishers, and those different publishers each might require different citation styles in their their, their, uh, their publications. So this is going to mean that you're going to have to format and reformat your bibliography for each publication, even though you might be using largely the same references. So this can be an unnecessary redundancy, and it's really not going to be scalable to large projects. 
you know, imagine having to write 50 long papers, each requiring its own citation style, you're, you're ending up having to reinvent the wheel every time you form your, your bibliography. And that gets unsustainable over time. So our first document, embedded system.tech, is a standalone document because it uses LaTeX native embedded system. And there's really not a whole lot to this document. There's just some, some you know, typical article structure where I've um, used the article class with a 12 point font again, and I've given it a title and author and a date. Notice that I've, in my preamble though, I've, I've set a bibliography style of plain and I'm using, I mean, I'm loading the NetBib package out of habit, but I don't actually use it in this document particularly. Um, as we go through, we see that this is organized into sections. There's an abstract as well. But as we get into this section titled Literature Review, an abridged history of neural networks, we can see that there's some places where there are some site commands that are appearing. And they all are behaving like I said they ought to. They're, it's a site command where I'm passing it a, um, a label for a bibliographic reference. And these are, these are labels that I chose. So where did I choose them? Well, that all appears at the end of the document. Right before, um, right before the end document, we see that there is a begin the bibliography, in this case with a nine, and an end the bibliography statement. And that contains a bunch of bib items. So in each bib item, I've, I've created, I've defined a citation key, the label for that, that reference. And then what is striking about each bibliographic entry is that I formatted it myself. So you just have to pick a citation style, pick a reference style, and format your entries in your bibliography according to that style consistently. So it might be that you're using Chicago style or APA or MLA or something else. But the point is, is that you're the one that has to do the formatting. So if you've got to put a title in quotes, you put it in quotes, you do your quotes yourself. And one thing, now that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this, one thing that I have not brought up in the uh, series of LaTeX tutorials so far is one of LaTeX idiosyncrasies about quotes. When you're doing double quotes around a title or any a quote, anything in, in, in LaTeX, you don't use the double quote symbol from your keyboard. You open the double quotes with two left-facing quotes in the top left button of your keyboard, and you close it with two right-facing quotes. And I'll, I'll show you what those end up looking like. And then I'll do it the other way, just so that if you forget, you'll, you'll, you'll see it in your formatted document and remember how to do it right. So we can look and see that we've got kind of these upside down containing double quotes, beginning convolutional network for images, and then closing speech and time series with these downward pointing uh, double quotes that contain to the, you know, contain the text to the left of it. If I forgot this rule about how to work with quotes, and I just got rid of those and used the double quote key from the keyboard. And I'll recompile my document. What happens if you look closely, this quote looks backwards. It's the same one that closes the, the title of the article here. So if you start seeing that in your document, it's just a reminder to you that you're doing quotes wrong in a way that is, is um, contrary to the way you know, LaTeX is set up to handle quotes. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix those with the right quotes on the left, or right quotes on the right and the left quotes on the left. Anyway, um, the title of the journal in this particular style was italicized, so I had to wrap that inside of a text SL for slanted uh, command. Uh, and then everything else is, you know, again, it's formatted by me, you know, followed whatever style it was that, that I chose for this. So it's simple, you know, you can type 
type those entries in pretty quick and get them up and running and start start citing them in your your text but you know imagine that i had a couple of dozen other articles like this one to write and each of them were going to a publication that expected different styles all of my bibliographic information would be here you know i could cut it and paste it into that new article but then i'd have to go through and manually reformat those bibliographic entries so that i'd be adhering to the appropriate style bibtech largely addresses the scalability issue by taking a database approach with it you can build and maintain a central database of your bibliographic references for a large project once Whenever you write a document that requires a citation to one of those references, you still access it using a cite command in the same way that you did with the embedded system. This time, however, BibTeX is going to automatically format a bibliographic entry for that reference according to whatever style you specify in the preamble. So you'll have the flexibility to, to, to do that, to specify the citation style that you want to use. So this way, you create a reference only once, but it can be used an unlimited number of times with different styles, and LaTeX handles the formatting for you. There is an upfront cost to this, and that cost is an effort. So you do have to build your own bibliographic database. But in balance, BibTeX is much simpler to use in the long run for these larger ongoing projects. It really does save save time if you find yourself writing multiple articles on the same subject, drawing upon the same references. So the heart of BibTeX is the BibTeX database that you have to create, and all it is is a flat text file. And conventionally, it's a text file that we give the .bib or the .bib extension. Each bibliographic reference in the database begins with a declaration of the type of references it represents, and it's identified with a unique citation key that will serve as a label. The data that makes up the reference itself consists of a comma-separated list of a field and value pairs. Different types of references will require different sets of fields, so it helps to have a collection of templates to work from when building a database. Well, luckily, the LaTeX Wikibook as a set of templates that you can draw from. So it's a readily available resource that you should use and will use during this tutorial. Then we'll de demonstrate some different strategies that you might follow for building your own database once you see what our sample database looks like. Now, once you've built your BibTeX database, you can begin pulling references from it in your document. And so to do so, you really just have to do a couple of things. First of all, you're going to want to declare the bibliography style that you're going to use by adding a bibliography style command to your preamble. It requires an argument, and there's several styles you can choose from. The plain style is the default. That's the one that's always there with a LaTeX distribution. But there are quite a few others that you could choose to use. Many of them are going to require you to use the natbib package. So that's something that you'll want to load using the use package command in your preamble if you plan on using really anything beside the, the plain style. There's a couple of others that you'll get automatically, but you might as well load nat natbib if you plan on experimenting with different bibliography styles. Once you've set your bibliography style, at the end of your document, before the end document statement, you just need to include a bibliography command. The bibliography command has one required argument or one required input, and it's going to be the name and possibly path, if it's in a different directory, of your bibliographic database, your bib file. And you leave the .bib extension off of that name. Then just start citing your references as you would have done in the embedded system. Use the cite command with the citation keys that you've set in your bibtech file for each of your references. I'm going to start with the sample LaTeX document that makes use of BibTeX. And what we'll see is that there's a total absence of any bibliographic information that's typed directly into this document. 
So at first the document looks the same. I've got a bibliography style command and a use package uh, natbib command in the, the preamble. And I've got my same lit review with the same citations to the same references. But then I scroll to the end of the document and the only thing that's there that suggests the presence of a bibliography at all is this one statement, bibliography references. And what that is, is it's a pointer to my external BibTeX file, my, my database. And what this is expecting to see is that there's a file in my working directory called references.bib. And there actually is, there's one that I've prepared. And so let, let's just, for the moment, we'll take a look at what a BibTeX database looks like. So open up references. And this is a pretty typical example of a BibTeX database right here. Each of these blocks that begin with an at something, at in proceedings, at master's thesis, at article, at book, at PhD thesis, those are all examples of different types of bibliographic entry, entries. They're different structures. What these different types of bibliographic entries do for you, these different structures, is that they serve as templates or instructions for LaTeX and BibTeX that say, look, go to the bibliographic data that we've provided and format that in a way that is correct relative to whatever bibliographic style we're using for information that's going into the proceedings of a conference or correct for a master's thesis or an article or a PhD thesis or a book. So each of these different structures are going to have different required fields. And what the fields are, are the individual pieces of bibliographic information. So we can see in, in proceedings, we've got an author specified, and it's actually a list of authors, last name, first name, separated by ands, comma separated. Well, the last name and first name are comma separated, and then the names of each author are separated by ands. The whole thing's contained inside of curly braces. And then there is a comma after that field and value. And we've got a year set equal to you know, the numerical year, again, in curly braces with a comma after it. The title, curly braces wrapping around the title with a comma after it. And then the book title, because typically this is going to be an article embedded in a bound set of conference proceedings. So the, the title for the conference proceedings is the book title. But if we look at some of these others, the master's thesis requires an author, a year, a title, and a school, but there's no, no book, book title. Or if we look at article, we've got an author, a title, the name of the journal, the volume number for the journal, the number within the volume of the, you know, the printed journal that this particular article is published in, the page numbers that the journal appears on, and, and then the year of publication. And so all of these are different and we have to have a way of, well, we've got to have two things. We've got to have a way of learning them. How do we know which template to use and what are the required fields for those templates? And then how do, how do we get this thing put together? So I'm going to address that, the, the, the first question first. If we look at the bibliography management chapter of the LaTeX wiki book, we can see that there's a very short chapter on the embedded system. And it's really just going to give you a review of what we've already seen for using the embedded system. So I'm going to gloss over that and get right to what we need to, to know for using, using, using BibTeX. And so once we get down to the section within the bibliography management chapter of the LaTeX wiki, wiki book on, on BibTeX, one of the first things that we see is a summary of these different templates for entries that go in your bib file. And so here's an example of an article entry. And then they give us a big summary table of, you know, what are the different fields? That's the left column that should or could go into the different types of bib tech entries, articles, books, booklets, and books, and so on. What I find to be a little bit more useful is 
when I scroll down a little bit further, there's this long-ish summary of the standard templates. And if we look at these, it gives us a starting point for formatting, for instance, our own article entry in a BibTeX database. We could cut and paste this into a blank .bib file and start adding values to it. First value we'd want to add would be the citation key. This is the label that we're going to use in order to make a citation to our, our future reference. And as I look and see what's inside of this article template, several of the field and values are just there, author, title, journal. That's because those are required. You can see up here, required fields are listed to be author, title, journal, and then later on year. There are optional fields that you can provide if you have them available for your, your reference, your article reference, and those include things like the volume, the number, the pages, the month of publication, a note. Um, and so when I'm using these templates, what I do is I, I copy and paste it and into my, bib, my, my .bib file, and then I fill out the values that I've got over here on the right-hand side of the equal signs. You can use double quotes around your values for author, but I tend not to do that. I, I tend to encapsulate the values of each of my fields in curly braces like you saw in my document. And there, there, there's some reasons that we can go into for doing that maybe, maybe later, but um, for now I'm just going to suggest that you stick to using curly braces around each of your fields. Uh, if I've got values for the optional fields, I'll, I'll use them. If I don't, I just delete that line. And that's it. You can see that all of the other typical fields that you would, or the typical templates that you might use for a bibliographic citation, they appear in this list. And so as you're building your own BibTeX database and you've got a reference that you want to add, one approach is just to scroll through the set of templates and ask yourself which one of these, you know, maybe based on the description, best describes the type of reference that you're working with. And that can be a, it's, it's a little bit tedious, it's a little bit time consuming, but that can be a good way to put together a BibTeX database. Now, another way that can be pretty useful is, so I'm gonna to go to an online database of, like an online repository of uh, scientific journals that's pretty popular. I'm going to go to JSTOR. Here we are at JSTOR and I'm just going to look for an article. This is just giving me information about, you know, the article itself. If I were working from a, a university or some other institution at the moment that had access to this database, then I could actually read and download the entire article. But in most cases, even if you don't have access to the full text of the article, you can usually find a link like this one on this page for the article itself, or even in the page of search hits that we were just looking at, you've got an option to cite, cite an item. And if you click on that, Typically what's going to happen is you'll get, depending on the publisher, depending on the, you know, the manager of the, um, the um, article database that you're working with, you might have a bunch of pre-formatted MLA, APA, Chicago style references, and that's great. You can just copy those and then paste them. If you were working with the embedded system, you could paste them into your article and then just go through and make sure that you were italicizing what needed to be italicized, fix the quotes, fix the, the accented, um, you know, characters on, on, on the titles. But we're using BibTeX. And if I look down here under the section that says export a citation, I can, the very last entry here is export a text file for BibTeX. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to export it and it's going to give me a way to save just this text file with pretty terrible name on it, but I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. So, and I'm going to have to remember that this is 10.2307 something. All right, and it takes pretty much no time at all to download. Now I'm going to switch back to my 
editor. And I'm going to open that file. And I opened that in my downloads directory, I believe. Should have been there. Oh. I want to switch my file type to all files as I'm opening it. And I found the file. And once I navigated to that file, it gave me a starting point, at least, for a BibTeX reference. Now, there's going to be some problems with this, this reference. There is some international uh, text here in the journal title with accented characters. And if I were to just copy and paste that into my BibTeX file, that down here at the end, it's a good start. You know, it's a quick, quick-ish way for me to get a new reference added to my BibTeX database without having to go through all of the data entry myself. But I, t I, I probably wouldn't just accept it just as is. There's a bunch of optional fields for the article that I just don't want to keep. I don't want to keep the ISSN or the URL JSTOR in this reference. So I'm going to delete those. I'm going to make sure I keep the required fields author journal. I'm going to keep number and pages because that's helpful for people that are trying to figure out where in that printed version of the journal the article actually is. I'll keep the publisher, I'll keep the title, keep the volume and the year. So I'll keep all of that information. But I've got all of these accented characters. And so right now this text editor is, is capable of displaying Unicode encoded characters like those, but LaTeX is probably going to struggle with it. And so just to demonstrate that it's probably going to struggle with it, let, let's give this a little bit more of a um, reasonable citation key. Let's call it Pridham after the author's name 00 since it was published in 2000. That's a pretty good convention to use when you are citing uh, or creating entries in your database. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back to my BibTeX file, and then I'm just going to add a line of text. And cite that entry. And that gives us a good opportunity to see that there's actually a process that we're going to have to go through to compile our, our uh, articles now when we're using BibTeX. And so the manual way that's going to work regardless of what editor you're using is to compile twice with LaTeX or PDF LaTeX. So I'm going to run it. And I get a warning, say that that new citation is undefined. I'm going to run it again. It's still saying it's undefined. Then I'm going to choose tools. So this probably isn't showing up on your screen, but I'll hit the drop down for the comp compilation tools. And I'm going to go through and select BibTeX. Then I'm going to run that once. It says it's exited normally. And I'm going to switch my compilation tool back to PDF LaTeX. And I'm going to run that twice. Okay. So actually, I had the order reversed. I needed to LaTeX it or PDF LaTeX the article once. I needed to run BibTeX. And then I needed to run it twice more, run LaTeX twice more. But now it's, it's done. And my citation to Pridham is here in, in, the, in the article. And we can see, I'm going to blow this up so that you can actually see it. We can see the citation. But there's something wrong. All of those accented characters in the title, the non-English representation of society and economy in Central and Eastern Europe, 
they're not accented. So in this case, LaTeX just ignored those accented Unicode characters in the title and the publisher here and here, and just, it, you know, it translated that accented A to an A. So here's how you get the accents back in. Instead of having an A there, I'm going to get rid of it, and I'm going to write slash apostrophe A. I'm not going to do this on all of these. I'll change this E to a slash apostrophe curly braces E. We'll just see that those two get fixed. So I'm going to save my BibTeX document. Oh, I'm doing it in the wrong document. <laughs> Should have done that in um, my BibTeX file. So I'll, I'll go ahead and fix that here. Slash A slash apostrophe E. Get rid of those. Like I said, I'm not going to go through and fix all of these. Save the file. Go back to my document. Tech it. Bibtech it. And compile it a couple of more times with LaTeX. Look at the document. And yeah, we can see that those two accents got added to the to the A and the E. So I would just need to go through and manually adjust those. And that's something to pay attention to when you're, you know, you're copying and pasting references. So those are the two main approaches that I would use for building my BibTeX database. And then see a little bit of the workflow for compiling a, you know, a document that's making use of BibTeX. So I would either, you know, I'd have the reference in hand and I would just manually build the BibTeX database by just typing each of these entries. That's actually what I did with these, with the exception of the last one. Or if I'm going out and collecting or can even find an online, you know, database version of the, the article that I'm, I'm wanting to cite, then a lot of times the manager of that article or journal database will supply the bibliographic information to you, even if you don't have a subscription to that database, because they want you to make citations to their articles, because that will encourage other people to go and read at their site and perhaps purchase a, 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 a um, subscription or convince their institution to do so. So th this bibliographic information is typically freely available and you can make use of that in order to speed up the process of building your own references database. There's no way of getting around it though. At first, this process of building a BibTeX database is going to be kind of slow and painstaking. And there's going to be some debugging that you'll have to get do. You know, you might make errors uh, by cutting and pasting some kind of an invalid character into one of these, or you might forget to close a curly brace or close a, you know, a, a, um, a parenthesis, close a, a, a quotation. And all of those things can sometimes cause subtle errors. Another thing that happens a lot is that if you are including some sort of a web URL in one of your references, a lot of times those URLs will include underscores or other symbols that are not standard LaTeX symbols, but they're math mode symbols. And so you would have to remember to put a slash in front of those in order to tell math, in order to tell LaTeX that you want to print that symbol rather than you you know that you're trying to format a mathematical expression and you just forgot to turn on math mode. So those are all pitfalls that you'll you'll encounter and you'll just have to learn how to how to handle them. But once you've got a working BibTeX database like this one, it's great because all you have to do at that point is include that database in your own working directory where the article is that you're you're creating and you know load it through the bibliography command. And that's it everything else at that point is pretty similar to what you would have done with the embedded system. You just make citations. Now, the last thing that I wanted to show is just how quickly uh, you can change the citation styles of your, your bibliography. So I could change from plain to something like alpha, one of the other standard styles. And then I would just recompile my document Go to BibTech, 
And then a couple more PDF LaTeX. And when I view the document now, notice my citations are no longer, blow this up, notice my citations are no longer just numerical values corresponding to the numerical entry in the references list. They, they give you a little bit more information. They give you a alphabetic abbreviation of the author's last names uh, together with the year that they were published in. And sometimes that's a preferable style to use. So in the, the LaTeX Wikibook, you'll see a summary of the different citation styles, the different bibliography styles that you can use. And as I said, many of them require the NatVib package, so you might as well just load it if you plan on using those. Another thing that's worth keeping in mind when you're working with BibTeX in um, the TechMaker editor, like we we see here, is that I showed you the process, the compilation process that you want to go to, or go through manually if you're if you're working with BibTeX, and that's to compile your document using something like PDF LaTeX once, then run BibTeX on your document, and then run PDF LaTeX two more times on your document, and that'll that'll ensure that it automatically updates and synchronizes all of your labels and references as well as your bibliographic citations. That can be a little bit tedious. And one thing that's kind of nice in the TechMaker editor is that you can select from the compilation tools Quick Build. And out of the box, Quick Build is set up to do essentially that process I just described. And, and in addition to that, it will also view the, it'll update the PDF document, uh, the formatted document of, of uh, you know, from your LaTeX article when all of that is done. So it's a, just a one click. I run it. I've got my new document here. And so that automates things. I didn't want to start with that process, though, because not everybody is going to use this editor. And it's true. Many other LaTeX editors have a similar tool, but it's always worth knowing the fundamental that, you know, to build a uh, a document using LaTeX and BibTeX together, you're going to want to compile the document once, BibTeX it next, compile it two more times. And if you've got something like Quick Build that'll automate that process for you, great. You know, you can use it, but now you know what to fall back on if you don't. Tech is a stable and well established system, but it does have its limitations. They're probably not important limitations at first. Uh, but as you start trying to customize your documents and customize the bibliography style that you hope to use, you might find that BibTeX can be a little bit limiting. An alternative that seems to be gaining some traction right now in popularity is, is BibLaTeX. So if you're viewing yourself as a, a, an ongoing LaTeX user, somebody who's going to continue using this platform for many years, you might want to consider putting some effort into learning BibLaTeX as well as BibTeX. It's got a pretty strong potential to be BibTeX's successor, but I'd say it's also still too early to abandon BibTeX. There's a, a bunch of publications out there in the scientific and mathematical fields that really still rely upon that. And, and that, that brings us to an important point. I haven't really emphasized the how and the why you should change different citation styles, different bibliography styles when using either BibTeX or the, the um, embedded system. And the reason for that is that in most cases, your publisher that you're submitting your work to is going to have their own required style. And that is set up by the style sheet that they give you to use for publication. And so it just becomes one less thing for you to worry about. And so rather than getting too hung up on publication for setting my own custom citation and, and um, reference style. I just go with whatever my, my publisher is wanting. Now, where that's going to be a little bit different for you is perhaps you're writing um, a, um, a thesis because you're, you're a student at a university or you're writing a dissertation. Um, it could be that your your institution where you're a student has their own stringent guidelines for setting up a citation and bibliography style in your, your document, and they might not have their own LaTeX 
style sheet for you to work off of. And in that case, then you'd find yourself having to do those customizations yourself. And so if, if you found yourself in that situation, that might be a point in time where you, it would be worth your while to look into a newer, more flexible system like BibliaTech. But when we're just getting started and learning, BibliaTech is probably enough. Well, that brings us to the conclusion of our tutorial on LaTeX and, and bibliography management using both the embedded system and BibTeX. I hope you found some of this useful and that you can get started practicing creating your own bibliographies and citing your own bibliographic references in your scientific articles. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next tutorial.